Notion Forms is new to Notion and it's free for everyone. In this video, I'll show you how to build a Notion Form, how to properly share your Notion Form so people don't see the responses, and three ideas on how to speed up your workflow using Trello boards. I'm kidding, Notion Forms. Be sure to stick through the entire tutorial as there are a bunch of small settings that you need to configure correctly for everything to work smoothly because if you miss just one, you can stuff up the entire form. Cue dramatic music. Thank you. So I have a blank page here. This is just a normal page and I've called it forms. What you're going to do is forward slash form. And now you can see here in databases form. If you're not seeing this, maybe refresh. It should be there by now. So here we have your form. If you haven't used form builders before, it is quite similar. So what I'll do is create an audience survey for this. And by the way, link in the description, if you want to fill out the survey, it would mean a lot. So here we have the name. Then of course you can add an icon as we can with everything. I'll just do a cursor and you can even add a form cover. Just like page covers in Notion, it will randomly select an image, select from the default gallery. You can upload an image, you can link to an image online, or you can just search in Unsplash, but I'll keep it simple and just remove it. So underneath this, you can add a description. You don't have to do this. As you can see, it says optional. Then here we have the questions. So by default, you'll have question one and two with question two being the options like this and question one letting them write out a response. Now, if you click on these three dots here, you can see a bunch of small settings that you really want to pay attention to. You have, is this required? Meaning for someone to lodge the form, they have to fill this out. You can add a description by toggling this, meaning you can just add more details to the question. You could toggle making it a long answer, which is what it sounds like. You can change the question type, which we'll get to, and you can view the linked property. So properties, here we have question one. If we scroll up and look at responses, here you could see question one. So we have question one and question two here. And as you can see, question two here, I'll just fill out a fake submission, blah, blah. And then question two here, as you can see, is a drop down. We have option one, two, and three. So if I go back to form builders, here you can see option one, two, and three. So let's fill this out. Question one, I will do, what do you do for work? So this here, the respondent's answer will probably not justify a very long answer. So I can untoggle this. I won't make it required in case someone doesn't want to fill that out. Question two here. How did you discover my channel? Searching for YouTube recommended on YouTube, Gumroad and word of mouth. And if I hover over any of these, you can see these six dots here appear. And by using that, you can change the order here. And when you're hovering on the other side here, you can see the delete. So I can delete this option here. So when you click on the plus here, you can add a question. Now with questions, there are a few different types. So you have a text-based question, which is something like this, where they can fill out with text. You have multiple choice. Then we have a date question. So the date question literally uses the date property. You can now see this date property appearing here. So when the respondent fills this out, what do you do for work? How did you discover this channel? And now we have this date property here. So if I now delete this date property here, delete property, if we go back to the form builder and scroll down, you can see this question's corresponding property has been deleted. So for someone to answer this question or a question like this, it needs to be an actual property. I hope that makes sense. I'm just going to go up here and change this to full width. So a setting to bear in mind is if you add a question, you can't then delete that property here in the responses. All right, so I'll just delete this here. We also have the person property, which is what it sounds like, which person filled this out. You can ask for them to upload files and media. Now this is really, really useful, especially if you're working in a company or with clients. As you can see with free accounts, the size limit is five megabyte. This is my tutorial account where I don't have a paid. I do recommend upgrading your Notion if you do want people uploading more files. There's also a bunch of other useful features. All right, so if we click on plus, we have more options like number. Number property is not like this, fill out in order of one, two, three, four. It is asking for a number property. So what is your salary? Now this can be useful to know, but it's even more useful when we look at the responses. What you can do in here is hover down here and you'll see calculate. We can change this to a few options, such as count, where it's counting the amount of time someone filled it out, which isn't super useful. You can see the percentage empty and not empty, also not very useful. Under more options is where you're going to get a lot of use case. So you can do sum, which is kind of useful, but for this question, finding out the average would be very, very useful. So if someone says 100,000 and then the next person says 50,000, you could see the average is 75,000. But speaking of this count metric, what you can do here is click on calculate under what do you do for work, for example, 
and do count and count all. Now it's going to count the amount of submissions that you got. So I'll click on form builder. Then if we add another question, we have checkbox. So a checkbox property is not like this. Whereas a checkbox is just the simple one tick. So you can just tick this in. You can't add any more options here. So for something like this, what you could do is I agree to the terms, for example, and then change this with a three dot to required. Something like that could be quite useful. And because required is ticked in, you can see this little icon here. So I'll just turn that off. And then lastly, we have email, URL, and phone, which is all exactly what it sounds like. So I can fill out their phone number, their email, or put in a URL. All right, so I've just deleted some questions to make this simple. I have, what do you do for work? And how did you discover my channel? Here you can see only members at Productive Setups can fill out this form. So this is something that we will want to change. So if I click on change here, you can see when I share the form, who can fill this out? So right now it's anyone at my account. I want to change this with anyone on the web with a link. This means it is now public and I can share it. Now, if I want to turn off the Notion branding, I will need a plus account. Again, I recommend it. And all public forms by default are anonymous, which is really cool. Like I said, link in the description. If you want to check out my survey, it would mean a lot if you fill it out. Now there are a few other settings to bear in mind. Here we have automations. So if we click on this, here we can create automations. So when someone fills out, how did you discover my channel? And they tick in, for example, recommended on YouTube, then a Slack notification gets sent or an email gets sent. Here are two other Notion form ideas to speed up your workflow. You can have a task request form for client work. Instead of clients calling you and sending meetings or emailing you back and forth, which I absolutely hate, people taking my course will definitely know that, I am not a fan of email. So instead they'll have access to a task request form where they can fill out a request. Another example could be creating a calorie counter for yourself. You submit a form every single day with what you ate that day, and that gets tallied up in your responses. So when you're ready to share that form with someone, you'll click on share form and copy this link. Or if you want to preview it for yourself, you will just click on preview. And after that, they'll see this page here. I hope you found this useful. If you want to learn the basics of Notion, click on this tutorial here or click on this video here to my premium Notion template. If you want a simple plug and play system for your productivity. Thanks for watching.